we guys can see the Jeep's back. Light's still on. The new part showed up. Uh, so I got this right from the people. Right from Dodge. Uh, it just showed up today. And the Dorman one will cost you about $70 more than the one right from Mopar. So uh, do not buy this aftermarket. Uh, Advance, Napa, of course it's all Dorman junk. Uh, they were all more expensive than OEM. Uh, this thing is over $200, uh, you know, OEM. It's like two, I don't know, two something. I don't even remember. But uh, when, I, when I did look, much cheaper than aftermarket. And you know it's going to fit and work as opposed to breaking, you know, two weeks down the road. Uh, so that's it. This is what we saw. If you guys remember, these are the two uh, connectors that go into the uh, squib. <laughs> your squib circuit. It is plug and play on the back, or it is plug in on the back. No wires run down a column. It appears that we probably have two uh, bolts or something here coming from the top. There's likely to be one here in the front. Um, it is locked. This is the locking device that keeps this from rotating. Uh, we've done another video on a clock spring before, so you, and I think where we actually dissected it, maybe we'll dissect this one. Uh, before we unhook the battery and get into all the safety stuff, uh, it's an airbag. Be safe, don't be stupid. Uh, so do whatever safety precautions you feel are necessary there, i.e. unhooking the battery, wearing helmet, face protection, rubber suit, whatever you feel is necessary. Uh, this airbag, I didn't try to take it out last time, they do not use any fasteners. You need a flathead screwdriver. So before we unhook anything, we actually have to start it up um, and use a mirror. We got to get back there and fish the connectors open. They're kind of a stinker to get to because you can't see them without a mirror unless you're like, I want to say Houdini, but Houdini could probably get it out. I don't know. Unless you can see around corners, like mind-bending, warping action. So I've got it running. And this is uh, pretty hard to represent. You'll see once we get it out here. I find the easiest thing to do is get back up in here with a mirror and a little flathead screwdriver. Keep your face nice and close in case she blows. Then you just kind of got to work. You got to work it. get them you gotta go uh, uh. there's another one there's one more little guy I'll show you what how they what they do when they come out so there it is so what I was picking at were these metal uh, retainers here Makes the beat sweat of your brow. Sweaty. Is that, is that a thing? Makes the sweat of your. What in the thought? This is like diffusing a bomb. Except a little less dangerous. So you've got these metal tabs, and what I did is I reached back with a screwdriver, get underneath them, give them a little turn, because where they go, or what they latch onto, I'll show you. So they latch onto these little little hooky things, little hookity doodads. I don't have a way with the words today. So when the steering wheel was like this, I gave it the classic, very classic reach around move. Reach through here with the screwdriver, give her a little tweak, just a little gentle tweak, and out she comes. So again, just a classic move. Get to your other one, full reach around, full handed reach around, and then uh, pop them right off. So that's that. All right, so now what we have to do is unplug our steering wheel. That looks like it's this plug here. And then just leaves those alone. That's pretty sweet. I wonder how you take the steering wheel off. It's got to be, uh, I don't see tapped holes. Let me get uh, some tools. So it appears we've got a 13 millimeter in the middle of the steering wheel. I did not get an extension. I'm going to go round and round. We'll get an extension when we go back together. So one bolt in the middle. Oh, 
smells like Loctite. Is that Loctite? I suppose they had a little something on there. They had a pretty distinct odor. All right, now. <coughs> rookie mistake. Uh, this steering wheel is does not have a unique slot, I don't think, does it? It does up at the top, perhaps. But we're going to be smart about this. We're going to mark this little guy. Ooh, I think she's loose. Is that loose? Oh, look at that. We don't even need a polar tool. <laughs> Let me get a marker. So it's got a dot on the column. We're just going to enhance that. And put another dot right there. Let me show you. Just in case this does not have a unique slot. So this is splined all the way around. I don't know if it has like a double spline where we can't, you know, goof this up. But certainly we don't want to get done and have the steering wheel all cattywampus. So I simply just put a uh, paint mark right there on the inside. That way there we can line it up. But I think, I think this top spline is a double spline. So I don't think we can screw this up. But we don't want to guess. I think that's, that's everything, right? Why is it not want to come off? That's, uh, how come it doesn't want to come off, folks? I have to get angry at it. Where's your problem, lady? So we'll take our steering wheel and we'll set that right up there. So there's our little clock spring. You know, one thing we ought to make sure is that our steering wheel's straight ahead. Is our wheels straight ahead, Mrs. O? Yeah. They are? Okay. I mean, they're not like all wishy-washy. Okay. All right, so yeah, make sure your wheels are straight ahead. We don't want to put our clock spring in in the straight up position but then find out that you know we're straight up and down in here but we're actually all this or this out there so that's step two um looks like we got to pull our column covers so we'll have to look there's got to be some little screws or something up underneath here yeah i feel some holes let me see what we got there so it looks like this column cover is long um Yeah, look at that. They put this thing on a hinge. Good job, Dodge. It's like they wanted this thing worked on, huh? Um, looks like a Torx bit of some sort, maybe a T15. So we'll get the screws out. Looks like there's one, two tray under there. We'll get them out, see if we can't get this little slipper -roo. Um Get these covers off. Let's see, I grabbed a T20 and a T15, so it's probably not either one. We'll go with the 20. Oh yeah, first try. There's one. This one feels different. Sometimes they'll have screws in them that are like a, you know, like a wood screw, you know, that just goes into the plastic. And then, like one of them might be like a fine thread, actually goes into some kind of threaded material. So, but that one there is also a wood screw type, coarse thread. I don't know what this one is because it's still up in there, somewhere in the great beyond. Come on. 
That one is also a wood screwish type. See how probably how these fit together. It's got little tabs, just so with little hooks, little male and female corresponding pieces. I don't want to click it together because you only get so many clicks with the plastic stuff. And then next thing you know, you're using duct tape. So it appears. We've got some pluggers on the bottom. There's one. There's two, there's three, looks like we got a screw over here, a Phillips head, the old Phillips head. And then what do we got up top? Got one right there. What's this? That's a T15. That is not the size you want, you want a T20. So we got one screw at the top. Like, might have to take the turn signal switch off. So there's that screw. Now these screws, like what I was talking about, these ones are actual, you know, like machinist type screws. They have threads, like a, I don't know, is that a number, number six, six or eight or ten. So there's that one. And there's one over here. Like same thing, same type of screw. There's two. What do we got here? We got one in the front. I can't do it today. My right hand barely functions today. It's ridiculous. Go arthritis. Couldn't really pick up a gallon of milk this morning. So there we go. There's another screw there. Looks like. Oh. Like a tiger. So I just slides off, it's kind of fun. Um, so we unplug this, per the instructions. And it looks like we just gotta do the old switcheroo with our accessories here. Too bad it wasn't like this in the car. Be fun. Um, let me grab a Phillips, get our new part. And it appears that we've just got to take our little turn signal switch off here with a mini, oh, a little mini Phillips head screw. Give this the old slipperoo. Looks like we got another one right here. that the old slipperoo and we'll take our new one slip it in the right way <laughs> could be completely wrong but we'll get our wire shoved back under its protective piece. See you Tuesday. Yep, we'll see you Joe. Okay. Yeah you're welcome. Well that was easy. 
and fun. Where's that one go? That one goes there. All right. Let me plug this one back in. Slipper back on. Right. Let's see. Then we'll plug in all the pluggers on the back before we screw it all down. That's how we do it. Um, and that's it. It's kind of a lame -o video. And then we'll just put our screws back in it. We'll get them all started first before we go hog wild, cinching everything down. Make sure everything lines up. Work to the factory specs. Where is that? There's that one back there. Oh, ste steering wheel's in my way. And there's that one. So I'll get these ones just lightly snugged in the back. one up first make sure it's pushed in all the way there's that there's that see you go okay, yeah you too there we got that one right there that's all there is to it we will fit our column Hands back together. This is quite the how to video, huh? A little drama. Slip that back in there. Get everything lined up again. Get my big head in your way. These screws back up. Wow, talk about a nuts and bolts video, huh? These are these can be kind of tricky. You gotta get the first one lined up. Which it's easier to line them up with this bottom one, it looks like, because we can actually see this one. Hopefully. All you can see is the back of my head, but I have to take my word on this. Dude, why do I even have this T15 in here? I wonder I'm all wobbly. Let's see. There it is. There's the back one. Use my left hand. Snug them all up once we get them all in place. There's that one. There's that one. Yeah. I'll go through and just make sure they're all tight. This one you can see 
right through the open slot. You can't see the screw, but you see where it goes. There. Well, looky, looky. I gotta get back inside. Oh, don't forget to close that back up. Now that we're back inside, excuse me. We want to line up our steering wheel clock spring assembly and it's got this little donger on it down here uh, this is going to line up so here's our old one little donger it's gonna come into this hole right here so our wires are gonna go through and then it's gonna see this it goes through like that simple as that simple 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 until it breaks. So we'll fish our wires through, leaving our locking apparatus in place. Line our dots back up. Might not even remotely close. Oh no, because my steering wheel turned a little bit. Son of a... All right, pull your locking mechanism out. Pull the pin. That way we can line everything up. My steering wheel is tipped a schmidgen to the left. There we go. And now we're now we're straight again. Steering wheel is on. I will get the bolt. Whoa! Got some Loctite. We'll put a little Loctite on it. We'll torque it down to the factory specs. We'll have to go look those up. I want a steering wheel flying off. Steering wheels are not optional. I'll put the airbag back in. And now that we've got that torqued to the factory specs, plug in your steering wheel controls. We'll get the airbag module. It's got a little rattle to it. Sheesh. Now you want to do the uh, Please don't have a short to voltage dance. In three, two, one. That one wasn't shorted. That one wasn't shorted, so that's good. No shorts to voltage. Take and uh, make sure your wires are out the way. Don't see any reason we didn't forget anything. Kind of line this old grubby thing up. That's fun. Of course, now we got the big moment of truth. Fire it up here. Make sure everything works. Wipers, work, rear wipers on. Let's see, we got turn signals still. Oh, yeah. We got that. We got a horn. Let's see if our, let's see if I can do this one hand and see if our airbag light comes on. No airbag light that way. No airbag light that way. Yeehaw, baby, we got it. Let's see, what's that button do? These buttons still work? Oh yeah, that does something. Personal settings. All right, so that's good, that button works. Oops, that button works, got us back to our compass. Our cruise button works, you can see that's turning on and off. So all our buttons work, that's good. And I suppose the big thing we all wanna know about is gonna be the data. Let me turn this heater thing off here. Auto, auto, turn off button, there we go. So we'll come into Chrysler. We'll get this loaded up. I think we looked at the squib PID last time. If I remember correctly, we were looking at um, whatever we were looking at there. The ohms, the yeah, the circuit display there where it shows us ohmage. We want body, airbags. We'll get that pit up. That should be nice and steady now. Of course, we'll clear the codes out. Of course, they, they kind of they self-clear on this Jeep here. Uh, let's see, what do we want? Driver's inflatable knee bolster, track position. 
airbag systems are so complex now. Driver airbag squid. One, two, show. Okay, so here we go. Let's start it up. They should remain pretty steady. Turn the steering wheel. You guys remember before, I think in the previous vid that we showed those were getting kind of bouncy, bouncing all over. We can see they're not now, so that's good. Of course, we highly were suspicious of this anyways, and we did a little test with uh, whatever we did the test with. Okay, so we got codes for squibs. Clear the codes. Um, I'll go back and check for codes. No codes. Beautiful. So that's it, folks. That's all there is to a uh, airbag clock spring unit on this Cherokee. Uh, we did make a good diagnosis, uh, as we saw. Uh, which, you know, I wasn't afraid that, uh, you know, we made the wrong call, but I just, uh, I didn't know if anybody had any questions on the video because they haven't even put out the first part of it yet, but hopefully this will summarize anything where these go up here, or maybe answer some uh, questions that somebody may have had uh, about our diagnosis or using the diode or making the wrong call or, you know, whatever. Um, but like I say, I think I stated in our video that if we had pulled the airbag out, you know, stuck a resistor in there and our readings were like dead steady, then, you know, then we'd be suspicious of the airbag module itself, um, you know, internally. Uh, I think if you read the flow chart on this, I think it just tells you to immediately replace the driver's side airbag uh, for any squib circuit codes. You know, it tells you to inspect connections, replace the airbag. So if you followed the manufacturer's flow chart, this would have boned you uh, on this one. Uh, that's why I don't use flow charts because that's usually what happens. They just send you on wild goose chases most of the time. And I've actually thought about starting a series on that, you know, bringing something in, um, you know, diagnosing it and then going back to look at the flow chart to see what would have happened. You know, when, once we know what's wrong with it, go look at the flow chart and see what steps, you know, if, uh, you know, if it would have, you know, through progression taken us to the answer or, you know, made us senselessly uh, replace something else simply because we didn't test it or uh, what have you now some flow charts will, will land you right on right on this you know spot on the money and i'm not saying they're all bad sometimes they have useful information but in the majority of cases they're rubbish you know they'll send you the long way around uh, with circuit tests and you know stuff like that and guessing and parts swapping and um, i think that's why dealers get a bad rap to be honest with you because I think that's, you know, perhaps what they do. I don't know if they follow flow charts or if they're at liberty to do their own uh, testing and, and stuff like that. But anyhow, why are we talking about flow charts? This is a Jeep video. So that's it. Do not follow these instructions to, to change your airbag module uh, or anything like that. Uh, definitely unhook your battery and get a service manual and follow your service manual to the T uh, for diagnostic stuff and uh, repair uh, procedures, especially when messing with something dangerous like an airbag or anything. Always follow the book. Always follow the directions. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Now that that's been said, Google Plus, Facebook, check us out there. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't, if you want to stay up to date with our weekly publications. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.